Good evening, welcome to Brass Tax. I'm Zaka Jacob. The Karnataka government has created another furor by announcing that they are framing rules that would mandate multinational companies to display the details of the Kannadigas who've been employed by them, the locals who've been employed by each of these companies. The Kannada and Culture Minister Shivraj Tangadagdi has told reporters that discussions are underway and a committee will be discussing new rules to ensure that Kannadigas are preferred when employment is provided. The BJP as well as leading voices in the industry are criticizing this, calling it a parochial move and also a move against the constitution, which gives you the fundamental right to allow free movement to work and for livelihood. But the most important question is this, for the IT and BT capital of India, that is Bengaluru, isn't this a bad signal for business that you are imposing restrictions or conditions on who can and cannot be hired by major businesses in the city. It has become more of a political drama. This is nothing a, a political drama for the consumption, political consumption. There is no act as of now, there is no demand from either an industry or from the people. How do you firstly view this? It's a very retrograde step and should not happen. कहीं ना कहीं सरकार को ये भी देखना चाहिए कि वो योग्य है, उनके योग्यता का आधार पर डिसीजन लेना चाहिए। हाँ, ये 100 परसेंट लोकल पब्लिक के लिए लाभदायक होगा, लेकिन ये हो सकता है उल्टा भी पड़ जाए। All right, so let's take a look at some of these uh, orders, dictates, these proposals that have been put forth by the Karnataka government in the recent past, which are not necessarily friendly towards business. Number one. Uh, the latest proposal that's doing the rounds is that corporates will be required to display the number of Kanadigas or the locals who have, they have employed, the number of Kanadiga staff to be displayed on the campus notice boards as well of all these companies. A committee will propose new rules which will enable and promote uh, the hiring of more locals, more Kanadigas uh, in employment. Now, then there is of course the Kannada Sign Language uh, Comprehensive Development Act that was passed on the 16th of February. The Language Act basically mandates that for all shops, commercial establishments, the sign board that they put outside their uh, establishments should have 60% weightage for Canada. 60% of the space should be for Canada. It also applies to all commercial, industrial establishments, trusts, uh, shops, etc. Non-compliance with this act can lead to the cancellation of licenses. But here is the catch. Not only is this particularly bad for business, it sends out a bad and negative signal to industry. This also goes against the law, against the constitution and numerous high court and Supreme Court judgments are in this matter. The courts have always ruled against any policy that pushes for quotas, particularly within the private sector. In Andhra Pradesh, for example, the Andhra Pradesh High Court uh, uh, and then subsequently the matter went all the way to the Supreme Court. It struck down 5% extra weightage that was being given to those who studied Telugu. In Uttar Pradesh in 2019, again the matter went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court struck down a recruitment rule which preferred women belonging to the state. That was struck down. In Rajasthan back in 2002, the Supreme Court struck down uh, the preference that was given to teachers who belong to the same district. And most notably and most recently, the case of Haryana, where the Punjab and Haryana High Court in 2023 ruled that this whole business of 75% quota for locals in Haryana in the private sector was unconstitutional. So this is the stated position legally in numerous judgments that I've just outlined. And of course, like I said, violative of Article 19 of the Constitution. So why then is the Karnataka government doing this? Sanju Varma is national spokesperson of the BJP. Sanjay Jha 
author and uh, political analyst and his sympathies, of course, are with the Congress Party. Mohandas Spy is chairman of Iron Capital and former HR head of Infosys. Brinda Adige, a social activist, joining us from Bengaluru. Sanjay, let me start with you first because this concerns the Congress government in Karnataka. Bengaluru is the IT and BT capital of the country. To send out this proposal, and now there has been some degree of backtracking to this, the IT minister saying this is just a proposal, a committee will be formed, we'll look into the rules, we'll make sure it's industry friendly, so on and so forth. But the point is, if this rule were to come to pass, that they have to display, every MNC, every IT company, BT company has to display the number of Kanadigas or locals that they have hired, what sort of signal are you sending to business that ultimately between merit and uh, domic domicile, you're preferring domicile over merit? Uh, Zaka, good evening. I think this is a very serious conversation and I will try and make it uh, as quickly as possible and be dispassionate on the subject. Uh, personally, I have always favored uh, full mobility of individuals within the, within the country to travel wherever to get the job of their choice. After all, the corporate employers deserve to have the best talent. And I think people who are worthy must work wherever they come from. I come from Bihar and you know how much the people of my state are maligned. Although we provide probably along with Uttar Pradesh a lot of labor to different states. So here is my short answer. Number one, let's not at all underestimate the power of Bengaluru and Karnataka. It is a Silicon Valley. It is the startup ecosystem. Uh, I looked at one data. 25% of India's digital talent lives in Bengaluru. And therefore, I believe Bengaluru deserves to have the best that India has to offer. Now, th th here, is, here is where it gets a little complicated because of the politics. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Zaka. You know, I don't want a BJP person on your program, whoever is going to speak next, to try and make this political because Haryana is an example where they did not even ask for the names to be displayed. They actually told as to what percentage should be employed locally, 75%. The same in Madhya Pradesh, again, a BJP ruled government. The same again in, in actually uh, 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 Gujarat. I mean, these have happened. It's there in Andhra, Telangana, Jharkhand. Many states have done that. I believe that here is the challenge. Politicians and all political parties have this huge responsibility to cater to the people that they need to serve. I mean, after all, it's not just a BJP issue. It's, a, it's for any political party. And I'll give you one example. You mentioned is unconstitutional. The truth is that end of day, by the Constitution of India, I think it's Article 15, the states are empowered to actually favor the son of the soil policy, especially to protect Absolutely. the economically and socially disadvantaged. And to that extent, it's not unconstitutional. I think the fundamental point here is for all political parties is to ensure just one thing. You have a mandate to give uh, the entire protection to the people who voted for you, but you can't do it against the interest of demand and supply. And end of day, that should not be violated. I think the Karnataka government, looking at the fact the big tech and, you know, frankly, all the big wigs are there in Bengaluru, is basically just trying to create an awareness that you need to also protect the interest of people who are locally domiciled or okay. who speak the language. Uh, article but 15, totally by the way, uh, says uh, it's the anti-discrimination uh, article of the constitution that no resident of India, no citizen of India can be discriminated on account of religion, race, caste uh, uh, or even place of birth. But be that as it may, Sanju Varma. Uh, before I get to this whole, what, what the Karnataka government is proposing, please answer Sanjay Jha's point. It's not just the Congress that is trying this, the BJP has tried this and it has failed. Most notably, like I said, the recent case being that of Haryana, where 75% reservation was being made for locals. The Punjab and Haryana High Court has struck it down as unconstitutional, and rightfully so, because Article 19 allows you the right to freedom of movement and to work and, uh, and for livelihood anywhere in the country. Okay. Zaka, as far as I know, you are anchoring the show and I heard uh, Sanjay Jha saying, you know, I don't want the BJP person to say this and say that. Excuse me, I don't need to take my lessons from a suspended Congress leader on what I should be saying on national television. So just zip it. It's my turn. I will speak exactly what I choose to say. The first and most important point, even when this happened in 2023 in Haryana, people like me uh, who believe that uh, meritocracy is what should be uh, of prime importance, especially when it is jobs in the private sector and within that, jobs within the MNC space, 
I never condone what happened in 2023, uh, though the Haryana government finally did not have its way, because rightfully so, the Punjab and Haryana High Court uh, struck down that 75% quota proposal. Is the uh, proposal by the Karnataka government saying that the 60-40 uh, you know, rule should be applied uh, to jobs uh, within MNCs in Karnataka, is that ultra-virus of Article 15 of the Indian Constitution? Yes. Is it ultra-virus of Article 14 and Article 19 of the Indian Constitution? Yes. Is it ultra-virus of the ROC guidelines? Yes. Is it ultra-virus of Companies Act 1956? Yes. Is it ultra-virus of Companies Act amended 2013 guidelines? Yes. But most importantly, Zaka, as somebody who's worked for donkey's years in some of the biggest bulge bracket firms globally, what is the meaning of an MNC? Let's forget about the constitution. Let's forget about political ideologies for the time being. And just from a layman's perspective, when you are talking of a multinational corporation, they basically have a global cross-border clientele. They have a global audience that they cater to. They are funded by global investors, hedge funds, pension funds, what have you. And they are not strictly bound by geographical or demographical boundaries. That is what defines the ethos and essence of a MNC. Okay. Imagine now, very quickly. Imagine now the four. You know, Sanjay Jha, you had a longish monologue. Let me make my point. Don't get so rattled when you hear facts. I know you're not used to I'm facts. I'm talking to Sanjay. Not digest. to you. Bite down. No, no, please learn to digest. Back I will okay, speak oh, okay. when I have to. Uh, let Sanjay make you. a point, please. Keep yeah. quiet. Yeah, yeah, Sanjay. Thank you. This man has a bad habit of uh, butting in. Zaka, no, let me. Zaka, can you moderate the debate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Sanjuji. Please don't respond to him. You're speaking to me and to my viewers. Please go ahead. Yes. No, but I don't need background music. I have the right to say that to you as the anchor. Thank you. Now, let me make one very important point, Zaka. Mumbai is the financial capital of India, just like Bangalore is the IT hub. And you know that there are at least four big tech companies. Tech Mahindra, TCS, uh, you know, Capgemini and IBM, which either have their uh, registered office or their headquarters based out of Mumbai. Now, imagine, hypothetically, that Capgemini or IBM say that 60% of the people who IBM wishes to employ you know, are not going to be based on merit as the criteria, but in Marathi Ani Chahiye, they have to be domiciled in Maharashtra, specifically Mumbai. Kar. What will be the choice left with IBM? It will be a very small pool of people. Or for that matter, just one more example. Gujarat is often called the Detroit of Southeast Asia. You know this as much as I do, that the Sanand Mehsana belt is supposed to be where more than 65% of India's auto makers have their plants. Be it General Motors, Force Motors, Skoda, Volkswagen, uh, Maruti Suzuki, Hyundai, Honda, what have you. Now imagine if the Gujarat government says, Bhai, ye hamara jo Sanand ka belt hai, it is called the auto hub, but yaha par abhi se Gujaratis will be deployed. 60% of everyone who's deployed okay. in the Sanand Mahesana uh, belt will have to be from Gujarat. I mean, how ridiculous is it? Or for that matter, or for that matter, since we spoke of Haryana, I'm glad that what the Haryana government proposed did not happen because in some things political ideologies cannot dictate what, uh, you know, uh, should be the uh, case. <laughs> the Gurgaon Manesar Belt is supposed to be the second largest auto hub in India after the Sanan Mehsana Belt in Gujarat. Now imagine if ML Khattar says ki bhai, jo uh, Gurgaon Manesar auto belt hai, maa par sirf Haryanvi aur Haryanvi jacks ko hi employment milegi. Look at the talent pool. It will shrink with no offense to none, with no offense to any particular okay. community. Request. So okay. my limited point is this. In some cases, meritocracy should rule the roost. And I think Mr. Mohandas Pai is absolutely I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll go comments. to him. I'll go to him. But but and very quickly, ready. 10 seconds, Sanjay Jha, before I go to Mohandas Pai. Quickly, please. Yeah, Zaka, let me expose the hypocrisy of the BJP. Until the courts struck the Haryana court, uh, Haryana government's attempt to provide 75% jobs, nobody from the BJP spoke. No one. When the court strikes it down, everyone comes and says, you know what? We never agreed with I that. Okay. Like All right. I let me, let me, let me, let me, yeah, let, let me, let me go to Mohan Das Pai, please. Let, let, let's, let's move away from the, let's move away from the politicians and the political spokespersons. Let's please go to Mohan Das Pai. Mohan Das Pai, the state government is now sort of clawing back on this. Priyank Kharge, the IT minister earlier in the day said that, look, 
This is not something that the state came up with. This was part of a public consultation process when the whole signage controversy was happening. We went to the public and we asked the public what needs to be done. And this was one of the suggestions that the public had given that there should be more employment opportunities for locals and that company should display how many locals uh, they have hired. What do you have to say to the state's sort of justification or the crawling back on, uh, uh, on this proposal? Look, let us understand one thing. All of us appreciate government of Karnataka wants to create more jobs for locals. Very good. Karnataka is the richest state in South, in South India or in India. Per capita income is the highest. All right. Because of Bangalore. Bangalore is the richest city in India. Bangalore has 23 lakh people in technology. We hired one and a half lakh to two lakh people in technology very here. You want a job for Karnataka. Very good. Skill them up. Train them up. Out of one and a half, two lakhs, at least 50% are Kandarigas. They're all locals who are being hired. It's been happening for the last 25 years. So, skill up more people from North Karnataka, where there are not many very good engineering colleges. There are a few very good, not many. And skill them up by training them in triple IPs, etc. And then spend more money in higher education, create more labs in 50, 60 engineering colleges, skill them up. So, our young people from Karnataka can go and get jobs. Nobody discriminates when you hide people in technology and MNCs, whether you are North Indian, South Indian, East Indian, nobody discriminates. There is no discrimination. You have to pass through a test, go through an interview. If you are good, you get a job. So why all this? Why all this kind of parochialism right now? Even if you don't want just a proposal, you are just shooting in the dark. Don't talk about it. Okay. Zaka, we are living in fear in Bangalore. About two or three mm. months ago, two or three months ago, uh, unruly elements went around the city, breaking glasses, yeah. breaking signboards, threatening people. They abused people on Avenue Road, called traders' names. You don't abuse communities and call them names. And the police kept quiet. Even on the airport road, when they're breaking all the signs, police kept quiet. And later only because everybody protested, all of them were arrested. They threatened the chief minister also, and chief minister gave it back to them. Now, we got a good chief minister, a mass leader, Sidra Maya. He knows what it is. We got a good Bangalore minister, DK Shukumar, who is in business. He's in the real estate business. He's in politics. He knows what makes Bangalore no, no, good. But, but, but so Mr. Pai, the, what, what the, the basic contention, before I go to Brindar, I mean, again, the basic this. contention that the state has been making, and mind you, it's not, Karnataka is not the first state to come up with this. I, I mentioned earlier in the program how Haryana tried this, Maharashtra has tried this, Rajasthan has tried this, UP has tried a version of this. But many states have tried this before, and the fundamental reason why they're doing this is that, let's face it, there is a problem of jobs in this country, good quality jobs in this country and locals, whether they are in Mumbai or in Bengaluru, are, feel like they are not the ones who are getting the best opportunities and the best jobs. So the government says, and including the Karnataka government in this latest instance says, that this is their way of redressing that jobs problem. Mr. Pai. This is not the way. This is not the way. There is. Tell me how much money have they spent on skilling? Zakar, let me tell you an experiment Infosys did many years ago when I was there. You know, Bira Kumar, social welfare minister in the UPS said, reserve community is not being hired and all kind of thing. Yeah. We made an experiment with Triple IT. We got 100 uh, engineering graduates from the reserve community who had not got jobs. We paid one and a half crore for a six month training and all of them got jobs. Most of them, got, most all got jobs. Some got two or three jobs. We did another batch of 100. Almost all of them got say, jobs. They're very good people. They have to be trained. And we then for the third batch, we told them to go to Delhi to get money. They went to the social welfare department. They asked for a bribe to give money. That's the status in Delhi. That time. That is a bribe government. Now, you see, people will get jobs. This is not the way. Nobody is coming in the way. Everybody wants locals to get jobs wherever you are. Okay. That's the policy. Nobody has discriminated against Karnatikas. Karnatikas are getting at least 50-55% of jobs. They go to all engineering colleges, hide people, and they come. But this is not the way. This okay. is not the way. I think, and remember, <coughs> in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu today, they announced in the budget, the PLI scheme where above a certain income level, salary level, they'll give 30% subsidy for a new job by a GCC. Last year, Hyderabad hired more people in technology than Bangalore for the first time in 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that is come by NASCOM. NASCOM gave the report. They constructed more real estate commercial property than Bangalore first time in 30, 30 years that I know of, because yeah. I've been observing for 30 years. So we must be aware, we must market, we must get more people, we must get a conducive assessment. As okay. it is, Bangalore's got a bad name because of traffic. I was the just getting to that, yeah. Many months back, in 100 days, we're going to... Yeah. What has happened? How much of this has happened? 
they must spend time in improving the traffic in bangalore making roads better making life easier for people completing the metro in time the metro link is getting postponed day by day month by month is getting postponed in electron city or other places they made a mess of it only so, now they got a good ceo so now, let, why didn't you get your act together okay let, let me ask brinda adige you know, you know i think mr pai is Dhaka. hitting on people, the the real nub of the problem and that is that bengaluru already in the last few years and particularly it's been accentuated after covid has been losing out to the likes of hyderabad chennai pune even uh where people are going away from bengaluru for a variety of factors you know infrastructure woes the traffic problem that being the primary one and then on top of that this whole language parochialism that's been going on now look make no mistake i am all for people who come to bengaluru to at least make an attempt to learn the language i have absolutely no qualms about it everyone should make an attempt to learn the local language but that is not the same thing as saying oh we will only prefer people who are from here <coughs> and who speak the language for employment they may not even be the best suited or best skilled for that job that is only going to further push away more it companies and investment to the likes of hyderabad chennai pune etc okay zaka first thing when companies acquire lands usually they make these promises maybe that is small print but there are promises made that this many numbers or percentage of jobs will be given to the locals so now if my government in karnataka is making a survey or you know putting out statistics or seeking statistics so be it let them find out whether that part of whatever promise was made when the industry was coming up has it been fulfilled or not the other parts that you talked about the infrastructure and the uh, traffic woes and water woes or whatever it might be those stand and the government jolly well get their act together right now the language part of it we need to understand that over the last 4 5 years there has been an imposition of hindi and probably that is why a lot of kannadigas are irked and now asking for sign sign boards signages should be you know 60% of the signage board should be in kannada and the remaining in uh, hindi english or whatever that might be but that said what we need to ask is what mr pai is talking about that there are 50% and more kannadigas who are employed in all of these mncs we would like to see the statistics if that is so and if the statistics come out if the survey that is made by the government and by the mnc is so then nobody has anything to say because you have it in black and white no no but, but, that is but not Brinda, so. there is a there is a fundamental problem in that argument and that fundamental problem is i i listed out the fact that it's unconstitutional because article 19 of the constitution guarantees the right uh, it's a fundamental right so you can't even you can't even uh, mess with that it's it's part of the basic uh, structure doctrine of the of the uh, constitution of india that Article 19 allows Brinda Adige, Zaka Jacob, Sanjay Jha, Sanju Varma, Mr. Pai, to go anywhere in India and work and reside anywhere for the purposes of livelihood, and no one, not even the state, can take that right away from you. Not even the courts can take away that right from you. That that is the fundamental issue here. Now, how many people are you know employable? How many people have the right skills? That's a that's a different matter altogether. I'm looking at a basic. fundamental legal quagmire here that tomorrow if brinda adige is to be appointed to a job in mumbai the maharashtra state or the company or anyone cannot object to the fact on grounds that she is not a local that's the problem i am all i am all for upholding constitutional guarantees that is something nobody can mess with and nobody can argue against but i am coming back to this whole thing of when a company came in to start over here they took the lands and then they said that they are going to give n number of it not be 50% it may be 20% it may be 15% n number of jobs to locals and not necessarily in a category they would have certainly said that the most qualified would be appointed at a certain position that is also something that nobody can argue about but has that company kept up its promise of this many percentage or number of jobs okay it so this argument category, of, uh, this, was, this this, this I argument was made i believe in the in the karnataka assembly last week as well uh, coincidentally it got made by one of the bjp leaders 
uh, from North Karnataka who said Infosys, I think he was talking about Infosys and Sanjay Jha, please respond to this. That Infosys came to Hubli, he was talking about the Hubli Darwad belt. They got landed right. subsidized rates, the building was constructed, but nothing's really functioning there. Now, the point is, Infosys is, is arguably one of the biggest star names in the IT industry to emerge out of Bengaluru and Karnataka. For a politician to target that company saying, oh, you're taking land at subsidized rates, the government is, you know, subsidizing electricity and this and that for you, water and so on and, and, and so forth for you, and, and yet you're not employing locals. I mean, if that was not given there, then Infosys or any company for that matter will go to a place where a state welcomes them for that or a state well, allows them for that. That is well, basic competition among states. Exactly. It's like it's like somebody said, you know, nobody is standing outside the doors of the secretariat and knocking and saying, oh, or, you know, please allow us to set up a campus here. No, it's up to the state to attract investment, not the other way around. Uh, Zarka, I think we are getting, we are missing the woods for the trees here. I think what the previous panelist said is extremely pertinent to our conversation. In fact, I was going to bring it up that large companies, whether domestic or multinationals, get subsidized land from the government for setting up whatever their R&D center or whatever you like. But that, by the way, land doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to you and me. It belongs to the people of India. The trustees are the people of India. And any government is responsible when you give land at a subsidized or free, like it happened to the nano project in Gujarat that Narendra Modi gave to Ratan Tata's group how many jobs were truly created? That's a question that everyone has a right to ask. And since yes. I think people talked about, you know, Bangalore losing his or Bengaluru losing his status to Hyderabad in Chennai, let me tell you, and this is a, a strong political statement I wish to make. One of the reasons why that has been happening of late, and this is the reason why the previous government was defeated, was corruption. It was called a 40% Sarkara. And second, a highly divisive politics amongst the young. You saw the politics in schools on the basis of religion. You know, there is going to be a cost, Zaka. A lot of people don't understand this. But countries and societies that play a religious communal game, you, you will have an economic cost. There no, is no, a trade The same off. can be said Zaka, about... Sanjay, 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 Sanjay. No, no, no. Sanjay, you're saying religious political game, but the same can be said about parochial politics as well. Yeah, They're also course. you're appealing to a least common denominator. They're no, also you're appealing to a, a base sort of instinct, if you will. Well, I, How I is that any more different from Zaka. from the you know religio -polit uh, politicization that you talk about? It's the yeah, same but thing. I, but, Zaka, but Zaka, there's one point we cannot ignore. Which is? Corporate subsidies do make companies responsible for adhering to a certain minimum standard okay. of so a community. Let, let's Sanju, let's Sanju Verma respond to that. So corporates are given okay. subsidies, whether land or you know construction costs or whatever it is, and therefore it becomes their obligation to employ a certain number of locals. You know, Zaka, I would like to stress on one very important term that you used a few minutes back, language parochialism. I will go as far as to say that Siddharamaya and his Koteri are engaging in a devious game of language balkanization, trying to divide the state and the country on the lines of caste, creed, place of birth, demographic uh, divide, what have you. I will now give you a small example. Brinda Adige made a very interesting point. I disagree with her, but I would just like to say something. When a company or a factory or a commercial enterprise decides to set up shop in India, it could be IBM, it could be Suzuki, it could be General Motors. Yes, they buy land, they are given subsidies, power subsidies, water subsidies, what have you. But at that very outset, there is a certain commitment. Sometimes it is put in stone in black and white via a memorandum of understanding, MOU. Sometimes it is understood. There is something which is tacitly understood without it being put in black and white. I will give you a small example. In 2018, the Modi government said 100% FDI in contract manufacturing, 26% FDI is allowed in digital media, and 100% FDI is also allowed in coal mining and single brand retail. But the government made a very important distinction. It said in single brand retail, already there are Indian retailers who are manufacturing quality goods. Uh, you know, which are exported to Europe, yeah. North America, Middle East, what have you. So the government said, suppose an outsider, say company X invests 100 rupees in India, it has to make sure that 30 rupees is sourced from local retailers. So basically for every 100 rupees that is generated by a multinational called X, 
थर्टी रुपीज is contributed by another local supplier or vendor right. called Y. So my limited point is that these kind of uh, policy changes should happen after a lot of introspection at the very start. It should not happen now after IBM has spent 10, 15 years in India or Infosys has spent more than 20 years in India. You suddenly say, okay. Are rules badal All right. hota hai. I'll give Mr. Pai the final word. You know, the problem with this resorting to language uh, subnationalism or language parochialism is, is Mr. Pai, that all parties are playing this in varying degrees. Uh, there was a yes. reference uh, that was made earlier on about uh, a legislator who talked about Infosys taking, you know, subsidized land in Hobli and building a campus there and not employing enough locals. Uh, so whether it is a Congress government or a BJP government, you know, everyone seems to be playing this because this is the sort of norm there in Karnataka that language politics, you have to be seen on the right side of language politics. How do you respond to that? Why can't Chief Minister Sidramaya say, I'm going to invest 1,000 crores this year to train 1 lakh people or 2 lakh young people and give them high quality skills to get them jobs. Let him make the statement. He's spending 2 lakh 90,000 crore revenue expenditure. He is giving 1 lakh, nearly 1 lakh crore as subsidies. What is 1,000 crores more? He's got a revenue deficit of 27,000 crores. He's borrowing 1 lakh crores. What is 1,000 crores more? Put the money. And say we're going to do this for all of them. What is wrong in that? That will go a bigger way and show you're serious about getting jobs for Canadigas. That is putting my money where your mouth is. They don't want to invest. They want to give subsidies. They'll give 3,000 rupees to some fellow, some young man who says he's not got a job after getting a diploma yeah. degree. Why can't they put money for training? Get the top 10 engineering colleges. Tell them each one of you train 1,000 people this year. Okay. Here is the money. Do that. It will work. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm completely, I'm completely out of time. But thank you very much for this fascinating conversation. Uh, like I said, there have been various sort of facets of this uh, at play at different states at different points of time. But ultimately, when it comes to the law, the law is absolutely crystal clear. The Constitution is absolutely crystal clear. Every Indian citizen has the right to live and work and reside anywhere in the country as he or she chooses to.